These highlights are produced by Sports Radio 1450 in coordination with WCIA 3 News. Last game of the season for 1A, 2A boys basketball, and what a finale in the Sangamo between Plains and Riverton. Cardinals unbeaten in conference play. They could take the title outright with the win, but a loss to the Hawks. The two would split the crown. Third quarter, Plains up nine. Great look from Taylor Staff to Devin Sabo. Lead was 11. Riverton would answer immediately, though. Kevin Bertolino finds Thomas Fitzgerald. He hits the three from the corner. Lead down to eight. Plains came back with an 8-0 run, though. Braxton Lanier off the screen. Pull up from 15 is good. Next possession, it's Staff. Pretty stroke from the corner for three. Lead up to 13 now, 60 to 47. Very next possession, Austin Havens from the top of the key. And that was really a dagger. 16 point Cardinals lead. The Hawks starting to feel the urgency of the situation. Zach Yogurst drives it, scores it, but Lanier playing a game of anything you can do, I can do better. His runner in the lane drops. Again, the Hawks feeling the pressure, so we just stick with it here. Off the inbounds, they push it up the court. Bertolino will take it himself, but just a little too little, too late for the Hawks. Michael Cameron went on a personal 10-0 run early to create the difference in this game. He dishes it to Alex Gustafson late to put it away. Outright, Sangamo crowned to the Plains. They win 49-41. I think the crowd on both sides kind of add a lot to the atmosphere. I love it. You know, it's a, it's for a conference championship, we brought a good crowd over here. I'm pleased with the boy, way the boys played. They played a good defensive uh, game, holding the to 40 points. We knew it was going to be a game, big game tonight. We knew it was going to be a packed house, and, but we like this. We like all this atmosphere. And um, we've been looking forward to playing them ever since we found out we couldn't play them in county. And so we're just all really excited. It felt like a state game. Uh, you know, it was loud. You couldn't hear anything. I, I, I couldn't hear my, my, my thoughts. But, you know, it, it means a lot going into the whole game and just coming out with a win. We haven't really uh, done too well as far as winning conference championships, but we finally got one outright, like you say, and it feels pretty good. Another conference title could be decided on Friday in the CS8. Lanfear already a share of the league championship, but they could have it outright with a win over Rochester. They'd have to do it without Larry Austin Jr., sprained right shoulder. That was not a problem. Things got started early with the defense. Surprise, surprise, TBJ Davis the steal. His lay-in does not go. Everett Clemens follow does. 20 on the night for Everett. A big night for Lance Boozer, who sneaks behind the defense here. A.J. Powers finds him. Boozer up strong. Lanfear up 18 to four in the first quarter. And then Jalen Brigady running the break. Scotty Wallace, the big man, running the court. 20 to four, Lanfear on top. Powers and Boozer gonna hook up again then. 15 points on the night for Boozer. T.J. Davis added 15 as well. They'll save the ball into him. And the senior point guard will knock down the three. So much for a trap game. Lions roll 83 to 42 to an outright CSA title. The Lanfear win means Glenwood will have to settle for second place in the league with just one more conference win. They could get that on Friday at Lincoln. Low scoring game, it was eight to five at the half. Jordan Gessner trying to shoot the Railers out of it. Lincoln up three after that one. Glenwood goes to their big two then. Daniel Helm, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And then Peyton Allen from the baseline. He tickles the twine from three point range. 15 for Allen. That was half of their point total on the night. But Glenwood never pulled away. Helm the block on defense, but Gessner another three. He led Lincoln with 12. Later, Max Cook would add a nifty and one, but the Railers had a chance to win it at the buzzer. Their half court shot goes off the back iron, though Glenwood survives 30 to 29. Back in Springfield, Springfield High hosting Taylorville. The Senators trying to build some momentum as the postseason approaches. But Willie Wiley doing his part. Fade away, Jay. That is smooth from 6-7. 26 and 11 for Wiley, double-double. Springfield was rolling in transition. Connor Jacobs knocks down the triple, and someone lit a fire under DeCarlo's pool on Friday. He picks the pass, and it is showtime on the other end. That's a hammer right there. Where's that bit? Poole can shoot it, too. A little bit later, he pulls it from the wing. Springfield high, 67 to 35 over Taylorville. And finally on Friday, a stop in Auburn where the Battle of the Gravens saw its formal annual renewal. Williamsville coach Brian Graven, son of Auburn's Doug Graven, shirts sold to those in attendance with the proceeds benefiting breast cancer awareness. As for the game, early on, J.J. Watson to Sam Pensabaney on the run out, bullets up two. Auburn comes back, Austin Minch to West Copeland, that's no good. Lyle Edwards, the senior on senior night, the rebound, the putback, two of his game high 16. Back to the other end, Pensabaney to Clinton Fletcher, an easy layup. Auburn goes to their freshman, then Cooper Eaker, he takes the contact. Gets the and one. We are tied again, and the Trojans, they close out the quarter on a run. Austin Minch is three, no good, but there's Copeland once again on the rebound with the putback, and Copeland had a nice night. On the break from Colby Butler, he'll score it again, and Papa Graven pulls the series even at three. Auburn, a little bit of an upset here, 54 to 52.